Hello everyone. So, in today's video, we are going to continue on our series on designing a Class A discrete headphone amplifier. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, I highly suggest you to do so. Um, the previous videos, it was basically just one like recording session that I did. I was thinking it was going to be like, oh, for example, a 40 minute video going through like the transistor selection, the emitter follower, current sinks and stuff like that. And it just ended up being in the end like around two hours and <laughs> I just decided to cut it all up. Uh, so yeah, I I'm still trying to figure out this, this video stuff. So bear with me. Um, from now on, I'm going to be uh, I'll try to be a bit more professional with this stuff. I'll try to to keep the videos um, well contained. But yeah, let's see let's see how I do. So this is the outline of the project. We have done in the first video the specifications. We did the transistor selection also in the first video. Then we went over the emitter follower design and talked about the Darlington and the complementary feedback pair. Then we did a video on current sinks and sources. And in the end, we've combined all this and we basically did like a bit a, a, uh, a preview of how our output stage of the headphone amplifier will be. We did it in a, um, we did it with a lower current. So just keep that in mind. That was just a, a, a taste of what's to come. Okay. So in this video, we're going to be looking at designing a common emitter amplifier. So up until now, we've only talked about current gain, but now we're actually going to be talking about voltage gain with the common emitter topology. So this topology, it's great for designing low power um, amplifiers. It's very simple. It's very minimal. You, have, you don't need a lot of components. You can do it with just one transistor. You shouldn't because the output um, impedance is very high, but you, if you combine that with the emitter follower that we've talked about in the previous video, you actually have a pretty good um, amplifier. Actually, like the final design of the headphone amplifier is going to be just a common emitter amplifier coupled with a emitter follower with some feedback from the output of the emitter, follow, the emitter follower. Okay, so now let's jump right in. Let's begin with a common emitter with series feedback. This is by far the most common design that you see around the internet. It's very simple. Sometimes you also um, have this being called a common emitter with emitter degeneration. So let's start. We're going to start the same way that we've did that we've did before. So let's draw V plus. Okay. That feeds into a resistor, an RC resistor, that in turn passes through an NPN transistor. Okay. Same as we did before. Now this time, we will actually put the RE here, okay? And this goes to ground just like before. The only addition here is this RC right here. So let's also add here our bias network to bias this transistor again just like we did before the good thing about learning about the um, emitter follower first is that all of these things you basically already have uh, the the knowledge to to understand how they work so the the basic circuitry just uh, continues the same you just use it in a different way so yeah Okay, so here we go. So this is going to be the R1. This we can call R2. And as usual, also put our DC blocking capacitor here. And this is going to be our VN. Right? 
So, oh, also, this is the output. So let, let's start talking about what this is. So, basically, if you omit this RC, you just make this RC, for example, zero ohms. What we have here is exactly the same thing we had before with the emitter follower. Um, now, the only difference is when we had the emitter follower, our output was right here. So it tracked the input one to one. Now our output is going to be at the collector right here. Okay, so DC blocking capacitor to our output node. Okay. Everything that we've talked previously with the emitter follower still applies in here. The first thing that you have to do before you start designing, before you start choosing any of these components is you got to know your input signal. In this case, we're going to be using the same input signal as we had before. So it's going to be a one volt peak to peak sine wave. Okay. Uh, this is we've chosen this because this is the common output that you see on a lot of consumer electronic devices these days. So it's a, it's a pretty good approximation of what you're going to be seeing in the real world. As we've discussed previously, you have to bias this base right here so that it is at least higher than your VBE right here, which is usually just a dial drop. Okay? Now, if you keep that in mind, if you put, for example, like say 0.6 volt, here for the VBE, uh, your transistor is just on the verge of turning on. You got to always put a higher voltage here. In the previous example, we've chosen to put 1.8 volts here so that around like 1, 1.2 volts appear here at the emitter. This way, we have enough room for the signal that we want to appear here and not be distorted so that the transistor isn't turned off. Okay, so here we have to do the, exa the exact same thing. So just to keep, to keep things uh, simpler, I'm going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to be using the exact same resistors, but we are going to be changing the RE here. Because in this example, since it was a buffer, we wanted a bit more current. Now I'm going to be using one milliamp just so that the calculations are a lot easier to follow. Not just that, but since this is just going to be in voltage amplification stage, we don't have to care about uh, having um, some uh, kind of like load capabilities, right? So let's start. Since we're going to have around one volt here and we want one milliamp flowing through here, so let me just write that down, one milliamp. RE should of course be 1K, very simple, because if one volts right here, there is a voltage difference um, across this resistor, 1K, it's going to give us one milliamp. So to have that, you have a 68K resistor here and a 12K resistor here, same as before. This is going to put a signal of around 1.8 volts here if our V plus is 12 volts, okay? Now, We've determined two things. First, our input impedance is already set, the same as before. We've determined our current flowing through the, the transistor. You usually see this defined when you're, usually when you're designing something like this, you usually define this as IC, the collector current. Always remember that the collector current is the same as the emitter current. Now, what we need to do is we need to select RC so that this node gives us the greatest uh, voltage swing possible here at the output. We want to maximize the voltage swing. The way that we're going to be choosing RC is very simple. Since we want we have one milliamp flowing through here and we want to maximize the output swing here, all we need to do is choose a resistor that when one milliamp flows through it, there is a voltage differential across it that's going to give us the desired uh, bias point right here. Now, the desired bias point here is not 
half the supply rail, as we've seen before with the emitter follower. That's not the case. Um, first, here we'll probably have around, let's say, like one volt at this node. So that's already robbing us of some voltage swing here. And we also have VC set across this transistor. So let's say like this point is going to have its lowest limit at around 1.2 volts. But remember that at 1.2 volts, this transistor is already saturated and it's already going to be turning off. So that's not good. What we need to take care of then is V plus minus the voltage at the emitter. So let me write this down. So let's say like, um, so VC right here is going to be our V plus minus the voltage at the emitter, VE, minus the VC sat of this transistor, so minus VCE sat, okay? But that's just going to give us the maximum, the absolute maximum voltage swing that we will be able to have at the output. The way to choose actually the VC is to do all this divided by two, okay, plus the voltage across all of this. So plus VE plus VCE sat. It's very simple. This equation is going to give us the, uh, the DC point here that will give us the maximum voltage swing possible across our circuit. Okay, so now let's plug these values into this formula and take a look at what we have here. Now, let's go VC equals 12 volts, 12 minus the voltage at the emitter, let's say one volt, minus VC sat, in this case, let's say, 100 millivolts, all of this divided by two, plus VE, one volt, plus VC sat, 100 millivolts, okay? So let's do that. We have 12 volts minus 1.1, okay? All of this divided by two, plus 1.1, which is the VE, plus the VC sat, 1.1. That gives us 6.55 volts. Let me write this down. VC equals 6.55 volts. So this is going to be the optimal voltage right here, the midpoint, so that we get the greatest voltage swing possible. So now that we have VC, this point right here, all we need to do is discover what's going to be the voltage drop across here, then divide it by our current to get RC. Let's do this that again. Okay, so here it is. So we have 12 volts and we are going to subtract 6.55, 6.55 minus, and we need a voltage drop of 5.45 volts. Now we just divide this by 1 milliamp, so 0 0.001 Ohm's law, and we get a resistor of um, 5.4K. This is not a standard value, so we are just going to go to the nearest standard value, which is going to be 5.6K. And with that, we are going to have a 5.6 volt drop here giving us, let me just do the math here, so 12, 5.6 minus, we're going to have 6.4 volts at VC, which is, well, close enough. It's a bit on the low side, but hey, that's okay. So RC is going to be 5.6K, 5.6K, right? Now we've determined 
all the DC operating point of this amplifier. Let me just write down like 1.6 volts here, just for completeness. We've determined the DC operating point of the amplifier. We've maximized our uh, ability to have voltage swing. Now let's look at the AC gain, okay, and the AC operating point. First thing that you've got to keep in mind when you're designing a stage like this, uh, your gain is going to be determined by these two resistors. Because what happens here is, whenever you have a voltage swing here at the base, that voltage swing appears here at the emitter, which modulates the current across this resistor, which in turn modulates the current flowing through this whole stage, which induces a greater or a lesser voltage drop across RC, which means that we have voltage amplification here, because the current is going to be changing, but our resistor is going to stay the same. Now, the amplification AV, AV, in this type of configuration is just your RC over your RE. In this case, you're just going to have a 5.6 times amplification. Okay. Again, this is a very, very simple um, circuit. Now, the problem is with like 5.6 volts of amplification here, if we have that one volt peak to peak signal that we want, we're going to get out around like 5.6 volts peak to peak. That's going to be almost enough for our um, headphone amplifier, but not quite. The thing is, this we are already having a very large signal here at the input, but let's say you wanted to amplify a very low signal, uh, 0 0.1 volts peak to peak. It's a very tiny signal. The way that you're going to be doing that, because you can change this, because um, the gain right here was already set, because we need that set like this to get the optimum bias point for VC. The only way to get around that is to change our AC operating point by using a capacitor so that we have um, an amplification factor for the DC, which is already set here, and an amplification factor for AC. Now, the way that we do that is we add a capacitor right here, okay? So if we just go and add a capacitor right here, let's call it like CE. What happens is, whenever we have AC current, appearing here at the base, it will appear here at the emitter. But the thing is, instead of going directly through RE, it has a much lower impedance path to ground provided by CE. So that current goes straight through CE. And in that case, you're going to have a very large amplification with the stage like this. Now you might be asking, how much amplification are we going to get here? Because this looks basically just like a short to ground as if this point was grounded for AC signals. And that's almost true because what we have here is that there is a, like a parasitic resistor here at the emitter. It appears usually like SRE. Let me just like try to draw this. So you usually have a resistor right here, RE like this, okay? And that is actually going to be your uh, emitter resistor for AC and for calculating the AC gain. So let's see how we can know that RE. That's very simple. RE, lowercase RE, <laughs> can be calculated with the following formula, KT over QIE. 
you also see this as IC for emitter for uh, collector current. Since here, for practical purposes, the exact same amount of current flowing through the collector is also the same amount flowing through the emitter, so we can um, substitute here um, IC. Okay, no problem there. Now, let me explain what we have here. K is the Boltzmann constant, which is equal to 1.38 to the power of minus 23. Okay, so it's a very small number. T is actually the room temperature, the temperature that actually the temperature this um, uh, transistor is going to be at. In this case, T should also be given in kelvins. Since Kelvin is a bit, um, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to use, let's just use the best way to measure regular everyday temperature, Celsius. So to convert that, we need to 73.15 times our temperature in Celsius. That way we get the temperature in Kelvin and we can plug it into this formula. To close things, we have Q which is the uh, electron charge, it's given in coulombs, and that is 1.602 to the power of 10 to the minus 19. Again, very small number. Now, there is a shortcut. You don't have to always be using like this, uh, these values here. Now I'll show you that in a minute, okay? First, let's go to the top side of the fraction. So we have 1.38 to the power of minus 23, okay? And then we're going to have the temperature. In this case, let's say it's uh, 20 degrees C. So 273.15 times 20, no, sorry. Not times 20, made a mistake here, it's not times, it's plus the temperature in Celsius, sorry about that. So that's our temperature in Kelvin. Um, now we just have to multiply this, we get this number. Then we're going to be using the electron charge, 1.602 to the power of minus 19. And that's going to be multiplied by our current, in this case, one milliamp, so 0 0.001 times, and then we divide these two numbers. And what we get is 25, okay? So that means that our E for these, for these values in this operating point, is going to be 25. So let's just write this down right here. So let me you know, R E is 25 ohms. Okay. Now, instead of always having to type out these very small values, all you have to do is to rearrange this so that we have uh, just a KT divided by Q over IE. Now let's just write that. So let's calculate that again. Since usually the room temperature is not going to change when you're designing this and it's all like an approximation. So let's go again. So 1.38 to the power of minus 23 times the 2 73.15 plus our temperature in Celsius. In this case, we're going to be using 20. You can just uh, recalculate all this for different uh, ambient, vo the ambient um, temperatures and just store those um, variables. So times, okay. Now we're going to be dividing by the electron charge. So 1.602 to the power of minus 11, oh, 19, divide that, 
and we get 0 0.0253. Now, we can just store this value and use it for all our calculations of RE for a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Just divide this by our current. So let's go. So 0 0.001, if we divide by the 1 milliamp, we get the exact same thing that we did before, around 25 ohms. So that is a very good shortcut when you're designing something like this. Let's just write that down. So we can simplify this as RE for uh, 20 degrees C is always going to be 0 0.0253 over our IC. And we get the exact same value. Okay. So now we know that we have this RE right here in series with our capacitor. So now that we know that, this is basically for AC, a capacitor is just basically going to be a short if you design this capacitor to have a high enough capacitance. Um, again, if you want to design this capacitor, I, I can do a video about this later, but it's very simple. You just have just put it, plug this into either an online calculator for low pass filters. In this case, it's a low pass filter because it's R force in series with a capacitor. Or you can just use LT Spice, just put the resistor RE in, in series with this capacitor, and you can get all the, 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 the bold plots so that you can decide which value of ca the capacitor here that you want. This, just make it as large as you can, and you're going to be safe. Here. Now, we can calculate our gain at the, our AC gain. How do we do that? The exact same thing that we did before. But instead of having 1K at the, um, at the RE here, we're going to be using this little RE here. Let's go. So RC is 5.6K. 5.6K. 5, 5 right? No, 5.6K. <laughs> Divided by our RE of 25. So that gives us a gain of 225. That's a huge gain. For example, if you had a um, 100 millivolts here, and if you multiply that, you get like 22.4 volts here, which is way too much for this input state. So if you were going to be just using this like this, you would have to have at least like a voltage of like around um, 20 millivolts here to get like the same thing we did before with the one volt peak to peak. Now the good thing about this is that with enough gain you can just start adding like negative feedback. This is a kind of negative feedback but then you can really start adding like negative feedback as um, you've seen a regular op amp. To tame this uh, down, this the AC gain down and with that you get a much more linear stage with a lot of distortion. The way that this is right, like this right here, even if you forget about this capacitor for the AC gain, it's going to have a lot of distortion, okay? Now, when you add this capacitor and if you add some negative feedback, this is actually going to be a lot better. And that's what's, what we are going to be seeing right now.